Hi everybody. Uh, today I wanted to walk you through how to create a Google form. Before we get started I want to make sure that I'm in fcpsschools.net. Sometimes if you have a Gmail account, um, Gmail kind of plays tricks on you sometimes and you might be creating a document in your personal account. So just make sure that you look up here in the upper right corner and make sure that you have that you are indeed in fcpsschools.net. Okay, let's get started. So at, we're in Google Drive here and we're going to go over to the create button and we're going to create a form. First thing they're going to ask you to do is to give it a name so I'll just call this Floris Form and you can name it whatever you want and you can pick a pretty theme. Let's see, I'll pick, I'll pick this one and you click OK. Alright, so uh, these kinds of these these options up here are pretty self-explanatory. I will highlight this one, the responses tab. Uh, in a moment, when we link a a spreadsheet to our our form, this is where we're going to go to one, say that we want to accept responses, two, to see a summary of our information. Um, so that's where we would go there. So I will come back to that in a moment. The rest of them are pretty straightforward. Um, so here we, you can change your theme anytime you want. In a moment, we're going to choose our where, where we want our responses to go, and then, of course, you can view your live form whenever you want. Okay, so looking at our form settings here, it's the first choice is require FCPS login to view this form. If this is checked, the person who is who you send this form to must have an fcpsschools.net login. They must be an employee of Fairfax County or a student of Fairfax County. So if you're sending this to parents or to somebody not in FCPS, um, they will not be able to get to it because this is checked. So depending on your purpose, this needs to be checked or unchecked. If I'm sharing with parents, I would have it unchecked. The next one is automatically collect respondents FCPS username. If you click this, this is automatically going to fill in. Okay, so in this case what this is going to do if this box is checked it's it's going to add a column to your spreadsheet that collects the username of the person who's signing in okay so those are your your first two choices there alright so now let's go down and and start making some questions before we get started let's go over the different types of questions so our question types we've got text paragraph text multiple choice check boxes Cho uh, choose from a list. These are your basic questions. This is where you're going to spend most of your time. Um, these four at the op these four options at the bottom are more of an advanced um, type of question. So for right now, let's focus on these top five. So the text one. The text is going to it's you can type your question and in the answer space is going to look like this. It's very it's very it's a very short question. Uh, if you want the person, if you want that question to be re be required, you click this box, and I'll show you what it looks like in the live form. So, here there's a little star next to it. Okay, so that means that when the person, sub they have to answer this question before they can submit. Okay. Uh, one thing I did notice: notice that I have these two check boxes here, and if I go to my live form, this is the form that people are going to see when you share it. Notice that it says your username and it gives you myfcpsschools.net will be recorded when you when you submit this form. Not j if, if I'm not this person, you're going to sign out and then sign in as you. Okay. Now if I go back and unclick these, you can see that that's not there. So this is what you want if you're sharing with parents. Okay, back to what we were talking about. So back to our types of questions. So this is just a short text. Um, the next one is a paragraph text. Your answer is going to, it's just just more room for uh, responses. Again, there's your required question. You can change to multiple choice and you're gonna, you can put your options in here. Okay, for multiple choice, you can only have one selection here. Okay, you can also add, add an other category. So that's, that, that might be a good choice for you. So, but keep in mind that you can only select one answer here. For check boxes, it looks just like the other one, except for this one, you can choose multiple answers. So that's that that good. That's good too. Um, the drop down box again, just like multiple choice, except for this one's going to have a drop down box, and I'll show you what that looks like. See the little drop down box there? 
and in the live form it drops down and then there's your options there okay okay so now I'm just I'm going to quickly create a form just to show you the process so here we go so the first question I'll say you know I want to know the last name of the person who's taking this so I'm gonna make sure that it's text short text I want it to be required and done I'm gonna go ahead and add add an item and I'll see which Google app are you most excited to use okay and this one I want to create I want to do multiple choice so my first choice will be docs and then forms and then sheets and we'll do slides and I'll actually go ahead and add an other because there are others done make this required and done next question is let's see I want to do add an item what would you like training on next I'm gonna make this checkboxes so remember checkboxes you can have multiple things selected so I'm gonna say more Google Apps uh, Isis eCart Tech Titans and definitely another on this one required and done okay so that is just a quick form so now before I want to share it I want to see what it looks like so here I'll just take you back I went to view live form and this is what my form would look like to the people who I share it with real quick last name this question you can choose okay you can choose multiple boxes here and then I would press submit so that's what it would look like but we're not done yet I want to make sure that we have all the things in place before we continue okay so the confirmation page so show link to submit another response so there's a couple choices here if you want your person your respondent to be able to go back and do this this survey again you'd click this so show a link to submit another response you're gonna give them that option if you want to publish and show a link to the results of this form to all your respondents you would click this one and then to allow responders to go back and edit after they've submitted you'd click this one so you might have a number of reasons why you would click any a few or all of these I mean it's up to you guys that but you have those options okay so let's go ahead and, and let's see let's see Kovi we'll do sheets ISIS and eCart submit okay so this is what the submission form your responses have been recorded and now because I checked those boxes in the previous screen you now see previous responses I can go back and I can actually see a summary of my results that's pretty cool or I could go back and edit what I just filled in so you are you are editing your previous results be careful uh, when sharing this URL of this page because it will allow others to also edit your responses so just be careful and be mindful of that so you may you can give that option if you so choose okay or here's the other option you can submit another response so it would take you back and clean out your previous answers and allow you to respond again so that's what it would look like but before you share it you want to make sure that you're you're capturing those results in a way that's best for you so here's where we go ahead and uh, attach a spreadsheet or there's another option as well so if you want to to collect the results of your of your form in a spreadsheet you're gonna to go to choose response destination and you're gonna create a new spreadsheet it's it's, it's gonna be the name of your form with in parentheses responses okay this is the one I like because it allows you to see individual responses so you can you can see individual responses if you want to keep responses only in the forms what this will do is it will it will allow you to just see the results as a summary so depending on the type of form you're creating will be the type of responses you want so if you just if you want a, a spreadsheet it's gonna allow you to see individual responses if you keep the responses only in forms it will only give you a summary of your of your of the information that you are collecting I like to do this one so let's go ahead and create 
and you can see that it's setting up a spreadsheet. Setting it up. Okay, boom, there we go. So now I want to go into view live. So now I'm going to actually put my stuff in now, Covey. I'm going to do forms, uh, more Google Apps, and submit. Okay, I'm done. So I'm done with that page. I'm actually going to go up here to my responses. I want to view responses. And you can see that it does a couple of things. Okay, it it pulls in your results. So it actually does a timestamp so you know who, when that person submitted their results. My first question was my last name. Okay, which which Google apps are you most excited for? Sheets, and and then I, I've done it twice. So then ISIS, and it, it it has a comma separating my two responses, and then I just clicked one here. So you can do a number of things with this results, and you can see if you if you include um, a last name or if you um, click the box here where it says require an FCPS login here it will have their username so instead of my last name it would be whatever my username is so that is uh, Google Forms in a nutshell uh, I hope this tutorial is helpful thank you guys